Hey guys, what's going on? My name's Chris, I'm your dad next door, and today's video here we're gonna be taking a look at two of Audio-Technica's entry-level line gradient, shotgun, boom mics, whatever definition you wanna give them, but we're looking at two of these style of microphones right here today to just give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the differences between these two units. Before we get too far into this video here today, I did just wanna say that on this channel now, we are doing a live podcast Wednesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a really laid back conversation between myself and my co-host, Dusty the Game Hopper, about tech news, audio strategies, new gaming stuff coming out, streaming techniques and things like that. It's just kind of whatever we see in the news throughout the week, we try to bring it up, give our take on it, and then provide any insight that we might see going into the future for the following week. So if that sounds like something that would interest you, be sure to check out the additional content. There's a playlist on the channel that'll be linked at the end of the video that you guys can see previous podcasts or uh, check out the live ones in the future. On my left, camera right, we have the Audio-Technica 875R. And on my right, camera left, we have the Audio-Technica AT8035. Now, right out the gate, you guys can see a very big difference in terms of form factor between these two microphones. The AT875R is your small, short-range shotgun microphone, and your 8035 is what they call a medium-range microphone. Now, what does that really mean in terms of technicality? Usually, these short-range ones are good for about two feet or so when you're trying to use them in a boom position. The mediums, you can usually get about four feet or so, depending on room acoustics and things like that, and get good sound quality still out of them. So just remember, as you're looking for different style of shotgun mics or boom mics, what, again, whatever definition you're looking for, uh, make sure that as you're looking for these, you pick the microphone that best suits the situation that you need. Now, outside of form factor, what else are we gonna be looking at difference between these two microphones here today? And starting off, I wanna say that there's a pretty big price difference between these two units, considering that they are entry-level market pieces. The 875R usually comes in right around $170, and the 8035 comes right around $270. So you're looking at almost, what's that, like a 70% price increase between the two. And a lot of that comes with the fact that the 875R is just a standard microphone, no battery required, requires phantom power. With the 8035, you have a high pass filter switch. You also have a uh, 1.5 volt or AA battery uh, phantom power solution. If you're using it on a device that does not automatically provide phantom power to you, you can use that battery and it allows you to be able to use the microphone in a more portable method. Whereas again, with the 875R, you have to use something like a Zoom H5 or some sort of portable recorder that gives you phantom power in order to be able to use it in a, in a, in a mobile solution. Other tech specs and information about these microphones will be available up in the cards right here or in the uh, images right here in the video. I'm gonna put as much information as I can about them, such as frequency response, uh, SPL, other things like that. That way you guys can see some other things about that, but I'm not gonna cover all those here today. Uh, line by line just because you know that was not the intention of the video so here we are just going back and forth and you'll consistently see throughout the video that i'm kind of changing between each unit and showing you the differences between the two for visual reference the meter at the bottom of the screen has the 8035 on the right channel and the 875r on the left channel so if you guys are trying to figure out what is what, if there's a clipping or if there's a pop or something like that, you guys can visually see on those meters which microphone is causing that so you know what you're, what you're trying to uh, determine. And I just wanted to do this as a quick video with a side-by-side -side comparison of the sound difference between the two, what you're getting for the price differences in these categories. Now, again, these are not going to be the boom response of these because I'm using them in a much closer proximity. I will move them in probably about another minute back a little further to try to give you a, an audio cue difference of what they'll sound like from about two feet away if they were both at that distance. Now I will typically say that if putting the capsules two feet away from me in each aspect, that will cause the chamber or the on-axis uh, on axis, what do they call this? The 
on access sound retrieval I, f I forget what they call the, the 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 casing portion of this that actually collects all the sound that's coming in um, but the capsules are actually back near the back end of the microphones here so when you're looking at these you have to determine when you judge distance from them, you should be judging it from the capsule, not from the ends. So right now, technically, the 875R might have a slight unfair advantage because the capsule is only about, we're gonna say uh, six to nine inches from my mouth, whereas the 8035 is already a foot away. So what I'll do is when I do the test for measuring the distance or pushing these back a little bit, I will make sure to have them set up to where the capsule should be about the same length. And in order to do that, I'll just kind of line up the XLR ports to be about side by side so we can get a gaugement or understanding of how they would sound like that. So now I have these both lined up in about the same position here. Again, with the capsules, what I, where I would gauge the capsules are at, right in the same position. So that way they would be technically picking up sound into the capsules from about the same area. And it would allow for a better control of, or, or a better comparison between the two microphones. Obviously the 8035 looks like it's substantially closer. Again, that form factor really coming into play here, really having the ability to kind of drive the on axis sound and keep it controlled inside of the chamber there and be able to drill more. And I think that's why these medium ranges are able to do more you know as you see them they get bigger and typically if you go from short medium long range they are designed to basically capture more sound inside that chamber there but this was just going to be a quick comparison from this distance to see if you guys notice a big difference between the two again my room is not specifically uh sound treated or anything like that so with uh, I do get a, quite a bit of reverb when I'm standing too far away from the microphones themselves. So you guys can take that with a grain of salt or kind of do any, uh, do any reverb or any echo you guys are hearing in the audio, cut that out, kind of understand exactly, try to pick up as much of what just these guys are sounding like for this, for this test here. And this right here kind of brings us to the end of our video here today. Again, the intention was just to give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the 875R and the 8035 if you were looking at trying to pick up a shotgun or line gradient microphone. I will say that, Nathan, thank you so much for allowing me to have these opportunities to test your microphone before I send it back to you. This is a great microphone that I've just enjoyed. I've, I've had a little bit of experience now with my 8035 and some different videos, but being able to play with the 875R just showed me that you don't always need a $300 shotgun mic. Sometimes these smaller form factor ones really fit the really fit the build that you're trying to do or your budget a little better and just give you a great opportunity to still have great sound and not have to have the microphone directly in front of you all the time. So with that guys, I thank you very much for checking out this video today. If you did like it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you liked it so much that you want to come back for some more, be sure to hit subscribe so that way you guys can get notifications of new videos coming out for this channel. Other than that, my name is Chris, I'm your dad next door, and we will check you guys next time.